come away with me and spend four days backpacking through America's first wilderness, the Gila of New Mexico. The Gila is located near Silver City, New Mexico. We'll hike right near the Cliff Dwellings National Monument. Why hike the Gila? It's one of the best riparian areas in the desert southwest. In fact, you'll hike in water a fair amount of the time. And there's even a hot spring. There's also fantastic geology along the canyon walls. There's wildlife, deer, turkey, and elk. Wherever you have water, you have wildlife. There's beautiful wildflowers and ponderosa pines and sycamores that turn to fantastic colors in the autumn. How to get there? It's about two hours north of Lordsburg. But drive carefully. Highway 15 switchbacks has narrow grades and has no center line. But enjoy the spectacular views. Turn left just before the visitor center for the TJ Corral parking lot. The trailhead is just past the bridge. There's plenty of parking and pit toilets. The hike I'm going to describe today is a loop hike up the West Fork, over the mountains, and down the Middle Fork of the Gila River. The West Fork section is part of the Grand Enchantment Trail that goes from Albuquerque to Phoenix. Day one of our hike starts at the TJ Corral Trailhead and goes 7.7 .7 miles up the West Fork of the Gila. The trail begins in high desert with beautiful vistas but soon the West Fork is encountered and the canyon begins. Then, the first river crossing. Don't even try to keep your feet dry. It's hopeless. You'll be crossing the Gila River countless numbers of times. I even gave up trying to keep my pants dry. The canyon walls begin to rise and the colors in the late afternoon are fantastic. Then we'll encounter a small cliff dwelling and a cave. In fall, the sycamores are beautiful. Day two, the West Fork. There's fantastic geology along this section of the river. Some of it almost looks like crystals. There's beautiful campsites sprinkled all along the river. Route finding is a little tricky. Pay attention to cairns and look for the trail on the opposite side of the river. Finally, we're ready to leave the West Fork of the Gila and climb Hell's Hole Canyon. Once you get to the top of Hell's Hole Canyon, the terrain really opens up. I saw an elk herd here near Woodland Park Tank. This would be a great spot to camp. The best vistas in campsite are just before the descent to the meadows, where you have an expansive view of the middle fork of the Gila. Day 3, 13.6 miles down to the meadows and then downstream on the middle fork of the Gila to Little Bear Canyon. The meadows campsites are at the bottom of the canyon. Made it down to the middle fork of the Gila in about an hour, a little less. It was all downhill, so it went pretty quickly. Tanking up with water because I, uh, I have only a one liter Algene with me, this guy, and that had to hold me from about noon yesterday until right now because I made a rookie mistake and I left two water bottles at home. There were beautiful fall colors along this section. The canyon walls are quite magnificent. The rock seeps that you see means you're close to the Jordan Springs. The Jordan Warm Springs is 94 degrees, which is why it's called a warm spring and not a hot spring. But be careful not to splash any of the water into your nose or immerse your face. There's supposed to be brain-eating amoeba in the water. The bottom is nice gravel. What you can't tell from this vignette is the beautiful light coming through the sycamore trees surrounding the springs. So for somebody like me, in minimalist shoes, in this case, 
sandals. This is absolutely the worst surface to walk on. So this is what I'm doing. This is like a sandbar, except it's all rocks in the river, and there's really no place else to go. Got canyon wall there, canyon wall there. So we walk on this stuff. And these fist-sized rocks, the problem is they're not big enough to be flat to support your whole weight, and they're not small enough where you get several of them under your foot at any one time. So it just kind of beats the bottom of your feet to a pulp. And, uh, it takes a while to get used to this. I've been doing this for a number of years now and my feet have toughened up. But uh, even after all that, this is uh, tough on the feet. Wear sturdy footwear. Wool socks will keep your wet feet warm, or at least warmer than they would be without them. Day four was a short jaunt up Little Bear Canyon. The confluence of Little Bear and the Middle Fork has tons of campsites, and the nice thing about staying here is it's a short dry walk the next day. On the walk out, you have nice desert views. Watch for critters. I saw deer, elk, and wild turkey on this hike, but unfortunately they moved a little too fast, unlike this tarantula. What would I do next time? What are the lessons learned? A. I wouldn't forget my water bottles. The way to not forget things is to load up the car the night before. I would hike counterclockwise next time, up the middle fork and down the west fork, because of the good campsites in the meadows at the base of the ascent. I'd spend a night at Woodland Park Tank to watch and listen for elk. And I would wear a bit more protective shoes like I did in a hike here a month before this particular loop hike. Next time, I'd make sure I have adequate amount of water treatment. I use chlorine dioxide or aquamira drops for water purification. Shaking is not adequate to determine that you have adequate volume left. The workaround I used was to boil water for tea. I drank some of the water straight from the river where I thought it was safe. If you'd like the GPS track for this hike, see the link in the show notes below. Thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe below if you found this video useful.